sure that I can navigate. Yes, I can. I think that I can. Okay, there we go. Let me go back. Okay, so there's our introduction. We don't need to go over the table of contents and everything else. I want you guys to think about what you want to do, what you want to get out of today. So on a scale from one to 10, write down right now, how engaged are you willing to be? One through seven. So this is going to be super interactive because I am always bored to tears when someone's just talking to me the whole time. I need to know that I'm going to have to interact and so that I do that. So an engage from one is like, yeah, I'm going to be on my phone. I'm going to be doing some other things. I might be in the next room cooking. A seven is like, I'm all in. I've already muted my phone. I'm, I'm all in. So if you guys can put in the text box. Um, to see what the phrase is the chat the text box the chat box there we go about how willing you how engaged you want to be i see one two yeah. chat box. oh darren man look at you Ooh, off the charts that's <laughs> impressive an overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i know we've got one more answer we'll move on awesome okay so and that's so nice Todd and Kevin are in participating too. Awesome. Just think about it. You don't have to put it in the chat. We've got one in there. That's good. So how much risk are you willing to take is the next one. One is like, no, no, I'm just going to be here. Don't, don't look at me. Avoid eye contact is one. Seven is like, ho, ho, ho. Yeah. I'm going to tell all the dirty things that I need to. I'm going to get it all out. I might cry at some point. That's a seven. 5.5, <laughs> huh, Derek? <laughs> so just think about it <laughs> it's like on the price is right just one above you <laughs> right. <laughs> is that what he does I mm -hmm. and then think about too what you want to get out of our time together maybe you're just here to support Todd and you're like whatever I'm just here for him Maybe you're like, I need to find a job now. Maybe you saw the topic and you're like, I want to think of networking differently. Or networking makes me nauseated. I want to know how to be less nauseated. Think about what you want from our time together. I would love to see that because I want to make sure that we address it. Especially if it's not one of the three examples that I missed or that I mentioned. Ninja networking moves. A good one. Need inspiration. Awesome. Hoping that we can get that. So, Lisa, I will ask you about inspiration at the end. Anything else that anyone wants to get? Not really sure if you're going to get it. Networking angles. Good one. That's Darren. Hopefully, we will give that to you. But I will ask at the end. Reinforcement of new tips. Good. Good one. And David says this too. Awesome. Okay. Hopefully that and Dawn did Dawn have anything? Okay. Dawn, if you have anything, just let us know. Okay, so let me go on. There's the next one. So if you think about everything that you're supposed to do, I want y'all, if you can unmute, just tell me what you feel like you're supposed to be doing now. Just some things. Not what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> right, not what you were doing, that's for sure. So, um, Lisa, are you unemployed right now? Yes, I am. Okay. So, like, what are, like, two or three things that you feel like you're supposed to be doing, like, right now? Um, children, something with children. Helping out with um, in-home in daycare at their house that is what I'm kind of looking at. And that seems to be interesting to me right now. I've done office work for the last 30 uh, 35 years and I'm just burned out. So this is a good thing. It sounds like, right? Right. It awesome. is. It is. Okay. 
What are other things, and I'm probably being too literal when I say now, what are other things that if you're unemployed or underemployed, do you think that you're supposed to do every week? Something that you're supposed to kind of focus on. Anything else? Darren? Searching for jobs that are appropriate to your skills and experience or to the career transition you want to make. Or, and uh, underneath that, deciding what you want to be when you grow up next time. All right. So a direction and searching. What else? New, this is Kevin. New skills. Okay. Think about where we are today, where I may want to go next. Does it mean or require new skills and how do I get that training? Okay. So new skills slash training. And I think Lisa mentioned it. It's, it is family obligations too. And and you kind of kind of feel like you need to step up that game because you have more time, right? I I know I I have before. Yes, definitely, definitely doing that. Mm -hmm. So, anything else that I'm missing? You've got more personal obligations now. You've got family obligations. You've got training. You've got job searching. Anything you know, for, else? Well, for me, I think you know one of the things, you know, in one sense, I'm looking for work. Uh, in terms of a, a, a ongoing job, but I'm also trying to balance that with not only the family, but with doing work in my business to try to make money too. So I'm, I'm really trying to uh, juggle three or four things like that. So one is probably a primary focus and one might be like a side hustle. Is that correct? Well, I mean, you know, I, I was actually running my own business and still running my own business. So that has been working better right now than finding, you know, a, a job, for instance, which is good, but also it's not enough for me at this point yet either. So, you know, um, how to, how to really think about both of those things, you know, oh, more than one job is what yeah, I'm hearing. More than one job. And one type of work that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there anything that I'm missing? I'm going to state the obvious um, with what we're talking about today, which is right. It's connections. It's connecting. Um, it's uh, it's, you know, the kind of what can I do for somebody? What can somebody help me do? And telling, telling my story. Ooh, good one. Storytelling. Yes, you are stealing a little bit of my thunder, but that's good. We're going to get to that. But the Sorry. storytelling. No, no, no. That's beautiful. So let me let me show you kind of um, some of the things that I listed here because I've heard these before. So let me go back. Sorry about that. So you're probably always told you need to update your resume. You're told that you need to be on LinkedIn. You're told you got to focus on cover letters. You you need to email recruiters like Kevin, ask about job openings, ask about status, you need to spend time on Indeed, um, search for jobs, apply for jobs, get on Glassdoor, attend networking events, which I'm going to categorize this as a networking event, so you can check that box for the week. Um, go to webinars. If there's any webinar that you might qualify for that might help you find a job or that might connect you with something, you go to webinars now all the time. If there's any career fairs, kind of feel like you have to do that. If you're unemployed, you have to file for unemployment. I think that we're lucky that we're in Texas. I don't think that's the mess that I've heard that it is in some states, but I've still heard that it's a hard thing to do. You're supposed to spend a lot of hours just finding openings and applying for the job. And you're supposed to spend, which I've heard, I said six to 10 hours. It could be four to 10, but these are all the things that you're supposed to focus on. So, and, and I don't know if you can see it at the bottom. I think you can. The bottom's just kind of cut off for me. And I remember the experts always say you're supposed to always exercise and eat healthy and sleep well, all that other stuff. Now, does anybody feel like they've heard a lot of this stuff before? Mm -hmm. I know. So, not the web. That's new. Well, again, it's just, this is more, you know, because of the time that we're in. 
Mm -hmm, definitely. Networking events are, you know, more online now. So it can be virtual or live. Mm -hmm. So we've all, Kevin and I were talking about this, we've all been in that, we've lost a job. And I'm like, how is this more work than my actual job was? So, and the overwhelm is so there. What, when I was originally talking to Todd about this topic, we talked about what are the things that you really need to focus on. So what we somewhat came up with together is really your RMAG. I'm sorry, I couldn't come up with something more creative than that. So there's four things that you need to focus on right now. Your research. So that's if you know you want to work at the same company that Todd worked at four years ago. You need to research. Research the company, research the jobs that they have opening, find people that are connected to it. So it's the research. And understand those culture and the values and see if that's in alignment with who you are and what you want to do. The second thing that you do that you need to focus on is meeting and talking to people. So this is connecting to people online, that's figuring out the different platforms that you can connect with people, and there's a lot of those. So this is your networking. Your next one is your action. So that's your do stuff. What action are you going to take every day to do the work that you need to do to get a job? But the last thing is grow. I know that this is something I have a planner next to me, and I used to laugh. I'm like, what do we have all this section for? The section for growing and learning and relationships and having fun. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm all work, work, work. And then I realized I'm like, oh, yeah, there's why there's other sections. Those are important, too. So don't forget. Um, sorry, I just put, oh, no, no, take an assessment. If you need to take an assessment to help you figure out what might be your perfect next step. If you want to read a book, exercise, learning new skills, all those are part of this, too because we've all heard the shining, all work and no play analogy. Don't be that. You've got to have some fun, learn some new skills and do something different. Let me go on to kind of what do you think about when we say networking? Because some people originally just get that panic in their chest when they think about networking. Give me some ideas what you guys think about networking. Now, Todd, you can tell me if I call on Dawn, she going to be all right with that? Um, sure, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Dawn, what are you thinking about networking? Uh, networking, thinking about talking with people in my line of work who I look up to, who uh, maybe have been in the business longer or, you know, basically um, higher up the ladder maybe and so know a lot of people and I can chat with them about you know, what I could do better, who they know, or what openings they might know about. That's what makes me think of networking. Okay. Does it sound, does it feel like a good thing? Does it feel like a burden? How does it, how does I think it it's a, a great idea, but I feel like because I don't know anybody that I'm at a, a ridiculous disadvantage because I'm from Michigan. I've only been in Texas a year. Okay. Okay. Well, you know us now, so. That's true. Yeah. You know find us all people. on LinkedIn and connect, and then you got a good start. Yes. And I've got lots of connections on LinkedIn. I just noticed today, Todd, that you and I aren't connected, so we need to do that. I thought we did connect the other, a couple weeks ago when we talked. I, I tagged know. you, and I tagged you in something that said you're a second connection, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. we need to remedy well, that. Well, we'll have to fix that for sure. Yes, we will. David, how about you? Establishing mutually beneficial relationships. Okay. Does it sound like a good thing? Does it sound like a beneficial thing? Does it sound, does it give you any angst or concern? No, it did maybe 10, 15 years ago when I first left IBM and had one LinkedIn connection and zero. Now it's, you know, it's an everyday okay. thing. And, you know, I do it even when I'm working, even when I'm employed. So. Awesome. Good. Okay. A lot of people, let me go look at the chat, see if I'm missing anything. I have to leave for a prior, prior commitment. Okay. Awesome. Is Dawn leaving right now? I didn't know if she 
if she bailed or she left. Then. She's here still at the moment. Okay, awesome. So a lot of people have that angst about um, networking, but I want us, I want to challenge us to think about that networking differently. Even if we think about it as being a large room, if we think about it, a, you know, a large group of maybe 100 people um, on a Zoom call, how do we want to, how do we want to change our thoughts so that our feelings and how we network are a little bit different? Does that make sense? Kind of think about it different. Think about how you want to go in and think about your thought. This is exciting versus this is scary and one more thing on my plate. And you can see how your actions and how you show up and how those look differently when you're anxious versus when I'm scared and way too busy for this. There's a lot that I could talk about about this, and it's at the end of the deck, and I can share that later. But I want us to think about think about how we want to show up for those networking events. Um, this is um, a little excerpt to from Marcus Buckingham. Um, he was a researcher at Gallup, um, which are the people that came up with the strength finders. So I love the way that he talked about strengths and weaknesses. Being from corporate, we always were, I was always taught that your strengths are something that you're good at, good for you, but your weaknesses are something that you're supposed to focus on. You're supposed to focus on those and get better at those. Am I the only one who's heard that or has everybody pretty much heard that that's what you're supposed to focus on? I focus on every corporate pet talk since the 1940s. <laughs> so Marcus is revolutionary to me to listen to him. Because his, his definition is a little bit different. The strengths are really those things that strengthen you and your superpowers. They're what differentiate you from the next person. So maybe Darren is a prolific speaker, and maybe I'm kind of okay with it. He needs to focus on that and what makes him awesome at doing that. And what makes him a better candidate for a position if that is part of the, his job responsibilities. Your weaknesses, even though we're told that we need to focus on those, they don't really fuel us. And when I think about it, they actually weaken us. They suck us dry. And they really, and we never really per perform the way that we want to because they kind of weaken us. So the thing I kind of want you to think about, and these are some things that we're going to talk about in just a second. Focus on, think about kind of what those are and how it would change how we talk about ourselves and prevent and present ourselves and what makes us the perfect person for any given opening. So again, even if there if three out of the 10 things are things that you don't do good at with a job opening, think about those strengths and how you can present those in a different way. I know I gave an example Anyone, can anyone else think of an example of a strength that is really an awesome superpower for you? Anyone? Adaptability. Adaptability. Okay, can you give me an example? <clears throat> Well, when you um, move from one uh, industry to another, like I went from um, retail at Radio Shack as a purchasing manager to the director at a uh, company that was primarily focused on manufacturing, I had to find a way to adapt my skills and experience over to the new uh, requirements in the role I was taking up. Okay, that makes sense. Does everyone kind of understand being able to switch really industries, and it sounds like kind of a different job too, what that could mean that Darren could do? What environment might Darren work well in? One that had a lot of change going on in it. There you go. One that's very fluid, one that doesn't have, what type of company? Can you all think or have any ideas? Silicon Valley startup. <laughs> Startups, exactly. Yep. That would be perfect. 
So does that make sense when you really, when you think about one thing that you're good at, what could you make that mean? You could make that mean four or five other things. So it's really thinking about that and how you can make it mean more. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay. All right. So this is my story time. So I want us to think about our strengths. And I'm trying to write this down so I won't remember. It's that mindset. So there's two things that I want you to think about. So I had a client um, that back several months ago before COVID thought he knew that he wanted another job, didn't know if he could get another job. But he's a marketing genius. He connects to people. You immediately, you don't think about him as being a salesperson. You think about that true connection, and you have it with him very quickly. So when we were talking, I could tell that he was marketing and he was sales. And I was asking him what he was doing with his job search. And he said, um, well, I'm kind of getting on LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, what else? So he told me some more stories. He was getting on LinkedIn. I said, well, how many people are you calling? And if anyone's been in marketing at all, he's like, mm, I'm not really calling anybody. So I said, so how do you make your sales every month? Because he was always a good salesperson, always made his sales. Um, and so he told me. He called people. He emailed people. He would text people. And I said, do you, do you know what you're doing here? He's like, no. I said, you've got to market yourself like what and I said you know all these things that you're doing to get the sales you know when almost no one can make all their numbers you always make your numbers it's like yeah and I said you're not doing that for yourself and you could just almost hear the light bulb coming on I, I wasn't face to face whenever he made this this revelation you're like oh okay so he finally got that connection with the skills that he already has that he's really good at because he always makes his sales and how he can relate that to him and how he could make that pivot and he could change jobs and he could do something else. What he actually did during COVID, he started, I think in April, he started in April. What he did was he found someone on LinkedIn. I think it was a second person connection at his ideal company. So he researched, researched, researched to find the company that he wanted to work for, found the company, found a connection there and said very nicely on LinkedIn, can you help me out? He's like, okay, what did you need? He says, I want a job at your company. Tell me how to do it. So she was very deliberate, made some introduction, got his foot in the door as it is with all of you guys, as soon as you get your foot in the door, that's all you need. You just need an interview. And Kevin can probably tell us a little bit more clearly about how you need to sweet talk the recruiters. But what he did was he got that in with one person on LinkedIn and asked for help. But that's what he did. He always, he connected what he did well, his superpowers, and how that could help him not just make his sales, but be his best advocate. Does that make sense? So that's what you've got to do is draw those connections with things that you already know and figure out how to be your best advocate. Make sense? This is way more talking, way more talking than I wanted to do. So can you imagine, and this is going to be part of your breakout session stuff, but what's a couple of things that you can do to become that marketer for yourself? Be your best advocate. Any ideas? Well, I mean, I think uh, in, in that vein, you know, even though the, the, you know, he, this guy was a marketer and he needed to market himself, right? I, I really believe that whatever your role is, you need to keep doing that, even though, you know, in other words, you may need to be a marketer to some degree too, which is the point you're making here. But part of what you're marketing is who you are. And the best way to market who you are is to continue to demonstrate that. And we kind of get into this mode when we're out of work where we're like, oh, well, I got to quit doing that. 
because I don't, I don't have a job to do it for, but there's other places to do and demonstrate that. And so it goes to your brand. Like if your brand is that you, like for me, I'm a product strategist person. So as long as I'm continuing to demonstrate that, I look like a, a product strategy person, right? When, when I cease to do that because I'm out of work and there's no place to do it, well, then I start to look like something different. So people don't really see me anyway. So, you know, one thing to market yourself is to continue to do that in some context, whether it's for yourself, whether that's for, you know, a ministry that you're supporting, whether that's some work on the side, right? The more that you are still doing what you normally do, the more you're sort of in the fold. And it's easy to talk about yourself and market yourself because you're still doing that work. Mm, I like that. Still doing the You're work. not getting rusty on your story because, you know, you're you're watching 18 hours of Netflix instead or something, you know? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> or just filling out applications, but not really connecting to what you do. Right. So. Yeah. That's good. I like that. David, anything you can think about? Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of at my wits end at this point. Okay. Not sure what else to do differently. Do you do I mean, you I, connect I, with people on LinkedIn regularly? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got thousands of connections. I you know I put stuff out on Twitter all the time. I put stuff on LinkedIn. I, I've been interviewed by some folks at LinkedIn, my past management experience and things like that. Okay. I've had several opportunities presented to people that can't get board approval to hire. So yeah, it's been kind of an interesting journey to say the least. And it's, it's truly unprecedented times yeah. here yeah. that we're in right now. And I think we're all doing our best to navigate that knowing that we're probably not giving out the best suggestions and the best ideas because it is such a new world for us. Yeah. And then I really um, overqualified a bit quite a bit. I've dealt with that in the past, but it seems to be uh, more prevalent now. And what's one thing that you say or a reply whenever you get that you're overqualified, if it is a, a discussion or an email that you can have? Well, it's usually not because it's a it's a canned response. But you know, I, okay. I, I can I can read through the lines. It's like you know, you know, it's the old, although your resume is impressive, you know, you you know, you've seen, you've seen it. So there hasn't been any real you know direct feedback. And what is if you were to have a dialogue with somebody, how could you explain that? I would try to, you know, try to convey to them, that, you know, I've had that in some of my conversations, you know, it's, it's not about salary, it's not about position and things like that. It's more, you know, the, the intrigue of the opportunity, whether it's, you know, helping build a company, whether it's, you know, helping develop other people. And like I tell people, I've been very fortunate in my career, so it's my time to give back. I, that's what I'm looking to do. I love that. But, you know, and that, that's really what's driving me, but, Again, that opportunity just hasn't come up, or it has, but you know, they haven't been able to get funding approval. So it sounds like you're somewhat aligning the positions that you're applying for with your values and what's important to you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Which is beautiful. There, there is a company out there that. That will be music to their ears for sure. Hope so. I completely believe so. Hey, second that. It will happen. Hey, Christy, this is Miguel Rivera. Jumped a few minutes behind. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. So to uh, the uh, answering your question here, how can you become a, a marketer for yourself? Uh, uh, I think having clarity on what is it that you want to market. Uh, Many times we, we could market leadership skills or uh, learning ability, like all, all these abstracts, right? But being clear on the outcome, perhaps, right? What, what is the 
a clear outcome or, or, or impact that you bring to an organization, right? Uh, uh, I think having that clarity first, right, uh, could be really useful in how to become a marketer for yourself, right? What is the outcome? Mm -hmm. of brain? The result, yes. I love that. There's and the that... How, the core values, all that, those are great, right? But sometimes it's right. like, what, what is the, the outcome, right? The end in mind, yeah. Awesome. I appreciate you sharing, Miguel, and thanks for telling me that you were on. I can only see a few people on my screen, so I didn't notice that you joined. So thank you for telling me. Nice to have you. Um, yeah. let me yeah, see, I, think, I think one of the things that people can do too in marketing themselves, right, is, I mean, what you're really trying to market, when you're trying to market, you're trying to find, it's not just that you're messaging, right? You're, you're also trying to find the right avatar, right, the right customer. Right. And so you're, you're not just, you know, speaking out into the ether, you're doing the research to find the right customer. And so your research part, uh, and a lot of times I think people will find, they'll do research on like, well, who, who needs C programming if they're a C programmer or whatever, but, but really most of the thing, you know, like the, if you're, if you're a C programmer, you just got to be able to program in C after that, it's all about like, are you a good cultural fit? And so, you know, like what David's talking about in terms of figuring out his values and stuff, right, is part of the research to find like who has the same kind of values, who would value that. And so that, you know, when I speak that to them, it's going to connect with them more than somebody who values something completely different, right? And right. Um, so, you know, part of, part of marketing is the research to find your target audience in the first place. Exactly, which is part of the four things that we're supposed to focus on remember the yeah. rmag yeah. such a lame <laughs> such a lame acronym but at least i can remember it so it, hey it'll be a it, it'll create a memory that's what it's supposed right. to do right? right yeah what are those but, things what's that yeah. second one yeah it's going to help people but I'll, I'll speak to that, Christy, just a brief i think that um you know what do you do to market how do you market yourself the way I the way I've I talked to folks about it is first find the problem, right? Beautiful. First find the problem, and that's the hardest thing to do. But as you do your research, as you know your well, first off, as you know yourself, know what problems you're best at solving. Right? And this comes to talk. This kind of rolls right into that story piece. But if you know what problems you can solve, and you solve very well, and you have in the past. Now go find companies that are struggling with that same problem. Yeah. And, then, and then that's when you start to dig into marketing yourself to that problem. Todd is a product strategist. He's very narrowed in on how he solves product strategy problems. And then folks that have that problem or struggling with that say, Todd, can you help me with that? And then from there, it opens up doors, right? But it started with one little thing and then it went up, but he focused on solving that problem. And that's how I look at it. When we hire people, the one thing I look for when I interview folks is, has this person solved the problem that the team I'm hiring for is having? Because if that's the case, the likelihood is people are gonna probably wanna talk to them and learn how did they do it differently. So that's, that's advice I would give. And, you know, and just, just to double back on that too, like that's actually what, you know, you do at the beginning of product strategy is you do research, right? You figure out like, what is the target market and what is the problem that people need to solve in that space so that, you know, and you ask questions, right? Like if you go in and say, Hey, I can do X, what you really want to do is say, you know, what's going on in your world? You know, what are the problems that you guys are struggling with? Start with a bunch of questions and then go, you know, I solve some of those kinds of problems and you might already know because you've already done the research, but you're letting them express the problems and then connecting to their problems and then, and, and saying, Hey, I'd love to come serve you and help you solve those problems as opposed to give me a job. And it, it just turns the whole thing around. And it's very similar to how we connect to Todd. You know, we were in a shared coaching I think Todd said something about faith, it's like, hmm, okay, I'm going to have to get with them. And we've had a few conversations because we have that 
shared belief, that shared thing in common. But it makes it very easy to connect with someone when you do have something in common or you can help them or you just want to network. But that shared commonality is something that is so human-like among all of us. Let me make sure, I want to make sure that I get to this one more example and then we'll break out into our groups. So think about how you can market for yourself. So some, what are some things that you can bring to any relationship? So we've got some examples, a friend, an associate at your desired company, a former coworker, um, a potential future coworker. What can you talk to them about? So this is everything from a recruiter at your desired company, a friend while you're at a barbecue, a former coworker, maybe four jobs ago, um, a hiring manager, what do they need right now? Or a distant friend or a friend of a friend that you met on LinkedIn. What can you do to market yourself? Anyone have any ideas? Just, just throw some out. There's a couple of different things there that can kind of help you think about it. Any ideas? Just one little thing. Listen. Listen, good one. Don't be talking the whole time, which is what I've done way more of tonight than I wanted to. Listen, good one. What else? Ask, have very mm -hmm. targeted questions. Mm, good one. Targeted questions like what? What do you do? Good one. Okay. What, what are you struggling with? That's a good one. What do you love to do? Tell me about the corporate culture where you work. What's it like? Good one. What's a memorable question? Can anybody think of a memorable question? So they won't forget you? I always like to go personal there um, and ask them about a situation that really resonates with them. Maybe it's a place they travel to. Maybe it's their favorite thing they'd love to do just to get them to talk more passionately about who they are mm. and what makes Good. them tick. Good. You can go. Um, so, you know, all of this work you do and stuff, what's behind that? What do you do it for? What's it drive mm. for you? What's it create for you? Cause that could be something personal. It could be something that maybe they really are into their career. They could be really passionate. They could talk about their passion. Right. And, but you know, we're all doing what we do for other reasons besides the thing itself. And um, so that's a good way to get to what Kevin was talking about. Yeah. Anybody else? I got one more if nobody else, but I'll let, I'll let it, the floor be open for other people. I know one of the things I was asked before, and it's so good, I've asked other people, it's a keeper, said, what is something that you're really proud of about your work and you hardly ever get to tell anybody about it or hardly anyone knows about it? Mm -hmm. so they're like, oh, I never get to talk about this. Let me talk about it. So it really gets somebody excited and gets them passionate too, which I you love. You repeat that? I didn't catch it. It was, the question was, what's something that you're proud of at work that few people know about you or few people know about it? Huh. So it could be that you ran a marathon, like you were on a corporate team, or it could be like you helped three people get promoted last year and not many people knew that you were behind that. But you see where somebody's really excited and they don't get to talk about it. That's kind of like asking someone what the highlight of their week has been. And that's a good one too. I've heard um, like what book have you read that really moved you. So not just what are you reading, what's the last awesome book that you've read. I know we need to be doing our breakout. So does this make you think about things a little bit differently? 
I'm going to put the obvious one out there on the table. If this is a friend or even someone that you don't really know and you're at a barbecue, you can say the simple thing, I'm looking for work. So you don't really have to have an elaborate conversation. It could be just something that you just think we call it the, the drop and dash. You just say, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm looking for work. I typically do this type of stuff. Let me know if you hear anything. And then you can bail. No commitment. doesn't have to be long and drawn out. But just, just telling people that you're looking for work is a good thing. You know, Christy, I think that that's a brilliant one in and of itself because there's a tendency to, you know, not want to seem vulnerable or needy or weak or, you know, all of these things we get in our heads. And so we're not, we're not actually asking people and inviting them into our world. Right. And, you know, people support what they help create. Right. And so, you know, let them, let them serve you, right. Let them right. help you create, let them invite them in, but we, we tend to not do that. And so when you can invite them into that by being a little vulnerable, it changes things. And for me, that is definitely one of the things that, that you know, this really sort of timed poorly for me with the COVID thing. But every, every single thing that's happened good uh, and moved me forward has been because I decided to open up and really tell a bunch of different people what was going on. And, um, and just everything just came from that, right? It hasn't come from putting any resumes in or any of that kind of stuff at all. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I would agree wholeheartedly with Todd. Uh, Todd, that's so, so great. I think that in, in this time we forget to ask, or maybe we don't want to ask for something, um, you know, and I think it's okay. Usually when you say that, Todd, like this is what I'm, where I'm at now, I'm a job seeker, I'm in search. Most people are gonna respond. The first thing they're gonna say is, or one of the first things, how can I help? What can I do for you, right? And then just have your follow-ups. But I think it's, it's great. I think it's a and, great thing to start with. And even if you don't have a follow-up, keep that name in your back pocket. Write something on your phone so that you remember the name. Go connect with them on LinkedIn because two months Correct. from now, they might work at your ideal company. Correct. And, and all I started with, <clears throat> with <clears throat> all I started with, with my asking was, hey, would you guys, I'm, I'm raising prayer. I'm doing prayer raising. And uh, so, uh, you know, I'm still not clear where God's taken us with this, but, uh, you know, you've heard of fundraising. I'm doing prayer raising. Would you pray with me? Pray for me for seven days. And, you know, if God tells you something or, gives you something to tell me back or then fine. And if not, that's great. Thanks for praying for me. That's it. That's all we I said always, at the beginning. I always love being on prayer list. I can use all the prayers I can get. So let me, let me make sure. Yeah. So here's our breakout session. Hopefully you guys can read this. Um, and Todd and I'll let you figure out the breakout thing. Yes. So think about five people with which you can network. So maybe it's at a barbecue, maybe it's somebody that you met at a barbecue two weeks ago. What steps do you need to take? What can you ask them and how you can, how can you provide value to them and what are you asking from them? So if you see my example here, it's okay, I've got a friend of a friend. My friend is from high school and his friend is an exec at my ideal company. So I'll ask to connect with this person on LinkedIn. So I'm going to say, hello, Sue, your friend. Um, I, can, I see that you work with Joe, and I went to high school with Joe. Would love to connect. So again, the questions, Kevin brought up some of the questions. Ask that engaging question. What are, what's keeping them up at night? What keeps them, what do they love about their job? Ask them what they're reading now. Ask what they wish people knew about them most and few knew. So that was kind of the example that I was giving. So have that discussion online. See how you can help. Tell her about one of your superpowers or book recommendation or something that they need. Ask how you can help. Schedule time to talk. And make a request. I need a referral for a job. Uh, just tell them that you're looking for work. Ask for their email address. And then the last thing is when you can make that connection, 
you want to make that connection on what date and then complete the remaining steps on the next. Does that make sense? It's five people. It might scare the living daylights out of you, but I promise I, I've, I've never seen a computer bite back. And since you can't go to visit many people in person, that's what you're going to be doing. Make sense? Everybody on board? You may be a little nauseated, then, then we're, doing, we're doing our good work here. It'll be good. Okay, so Todd, can we keep this up when people go to breakout sessions? Can we keep what up? Can we keep this up? Um, yes. I don't know if that will stay up when they go or not. Okay. But uh, we'll, we'll leave it up and see what happens. Hey, I think it'll Todd. go with you wherever you go, Christy, is what will probably happen. Okay. Hey, Todd, mm -hmm. just thinking, There's, I think there's only um, six. We, we could just stay here if you want. Yeah, or one, two, up. three, four, five. There's six of us, six or seven of us. Yeah. It's up to you, Christy. We could stay right here and just yeah, work fine. through it together. Yeah, let's do that's that. Fine. So, way. so how, that. that's fine to stay here. So think about, let's at least think about three people that you can network with. <clears throat> I, you know, I completely agree with that too, Christy, because being specific is important here, right? Like literally define who the three people are. Right. <clears throat> Next week, so you can get a different at, three. Yeah, let's at least come up with three. You know what? I can do this too. And there's, and there's some people, these may be people that you are already connected with on LinkedIn, that you haven't talked to in several years, all that stuff. So I'm going to follow back up with some people. So let's do the chat. So when you have your three or whatever number you come up with, which has got to be more than one, why don't you drop that number in the chat? And then we know that you're ready to move on. Wow, y'all are a lot faster than I am. Okay, Todd has five, David has three, Kevin has seven. Look at that, Todd named his two, it's impressive. Darren, two, Lisa, three, Miguel, three. Is that everybody? I think so, right? Okay, so let's have your you're three to five. Everybody got at least three. Awesome. So let's then figure out what your next steps are with them. And how you're going to do it. So it might be an email. It might be connecting on LinkedIn. It might be texting them. Um, it might be messaging them on some other social media. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Instagram, whatever that is. Figure out how you're going to connect with them and then what you're going to do. Can I ask a quick question, Christy? Of is course. something that you recommend thinking about frequently, asking yourself this question maybe every so often, once a month? Just the fact that you asked the question is good. Like, I, I, I didn't have immediate answers to this. So, like, I don't ask myself this question often, you know power of the questions, quality of your life kind of a thing. And uh, this is a good question to ask. And how, how often do you recommend asking this question? Is this something you want to set an intention about, you know, on a recurring basis? It is for me. 
Um, so with kind of like Todd, I do a few different things. I do some business coaching. I do regular coaching, um, executive coaching. I do consulting. So there's several different reasons that I can follow up with people um, and do that. Like one person that I know I'm going to follow up on, the last time I talked to her was last summer and her child needed an internship. I'm like, holy shnikes. She's now just graduated. She's going to need a lot more than that. Let me see what she needs now. So that's one of the people that I'm going to follow up with because I researched internships for her daughter last year. Nice. Gotcha. Okay. So it's random yeah. things. Yeah. Right. But I knew that her daughter was like <clears throat> always top of mind. And I knew that that was always something that she will always gladly talk about anytime. There's a, there's an interesting book uh, guys called the, I won't get into all the details of it, but I'll tell you why I'll tell it to you and then you can read it if you want. But there's a great book called The 12 Week Year. And the premise of this 12 week year book is that um, you basically a month becomes a week. <laughs> and uh, and so you plan sort of four years a year, if you would. And but the main thing is about getting past the idea of uh, the lag result, the outcome and getting more focused on tracking your execution towards that outcome because you control that one and you don't actually control the outcome. You don't control if you're going to get a job, but you control whether or not you're going to go network with people. So when you make your plan each week, right, you, you can say like, Hey, I want to, you know, part of my plan is I want to connect with five people. So great. Who are those five people each week? Right. And because my part of the role is to connect with five people, right. Or whatever. Right. And, uh, and whether or not that becomes something is another thing, but you know, it's certainly not going to become a thing if I don't actually do the execution part. Right. So just manage the execution part. And so if you think like, Hey, I need to be networking regularly, meeting people, talking with people. Okay. Well, who are the two or three or four people you're going to do each week and each week you're kind of thinking about the next week, right? Like who am I going to kind of get on the schedule this week for next week? Right. And, uh, and so then you kind of have a regular, regular thing going, a rhythm and a, and a ritual going. That's good stuff. Thanks for sharing, Todd. There's a lot more to that book, but that's, that's the reason why I bring that one up because it's all about the execution. Yeah. I'm all about productivity. I just, I just bought it. I had not, I, I think I may have glanced, come across it. never read it. I'll read it. you you mentioning it. That's good. So, Once you read it, you can join my WAM meeting. If you want. You check like step number two with me. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I know we've been chat, chat, chat. And we've been throwing out ideas. Tell me if you've got at least one action. Or like put two A's or three A's or four A's if you have your action for your people. The action meaning what you, how you're going to reach out to them or whatever? Correct. What you're going to yeah, do. Yeah. yeah, at least some action. I, I did and, want to connect, connect on, with her on LinkedIn. I, I reached out to you, Christy, on LinkedIn to connect with you. Okay. <laughs> that, that is officially your free pass. You've got to at least put one more on there. And I'll connect with you all on LinkedIn. If I don't, please come find me. One hey. cent, two coffee. So that's five actions. Good job, Todd. I'm going to, and I want to point something out with what Todd is doing. Um, Cause we're not, we're not all doing it. He's the only, he's the only one doing it, but um, he's making it real. Right. Um, it's almost like following a smart goal. If you've never heard of smart goals, I would highly recommend you reading them, going and looking it up. I won't go into great detail, but it's basically uh, just set measurable, uh, attainable, specific. specific, specific, measurable, attainable, and realistic, realistic, and, realistic and time bound and time, yeah. time bound. Yeah. And specific time. Anyway, the, the, the reason I bring it up is, uh, when Todd put the names down of the folks, right. It made him real. Mm -hmm. And when he put the action, he, it made it real. Cause I think we can just say me, 
seven. I have ideas of how I'm going to do it. I wrote down some of it, but when we shared it with other people, guess what? It all became everybody. We all became everybody's accountability. So I just thought that was really good time. Yeah, that's again, that's kind of, you know, part of the WAM, the, the 12 week year thing is we have a WAM meeting, you know, it's a, a weekly action meeting where we just get to, with each other and share our activity score, which is just the percentage of execution that you managed to pull off. And, uh, and so, you know, every week we're going like, yeah, I didn't do half the things. And it's really about having integrity to yourself, right? Um, like if you said you were going to do it, do you have integrity to yourself to actually do what you said? And it's taken us a couple of quarters to get good at it. <laughs> it was pretty bad at first. And but, sometimes you, you know, shuffle right at the last minute. You're like, I can't go to that meeting with nothing. I'm going to spend the last hour before the meeting right. hustling. That's right. That's right. But you, it's a hustle. You, even if you got to get it together at the last minute, right? But it, it forces you to come to something time bound, right? Like every week, right. Monday morning at eight o'clock, you're going to go and report out what you managed to accomplish. And, um, and so, you know, but you also learn to not be general, right? This is what we learned first. Like when you were general, it's kind of what Kevin's saying, you, you didn't do it. Cause it's like, in theory, I'm going to get with people. No, I'm going to get with these five people this way. Right. And this time. Yeah. So let's focus on the dates. I will do whatever I'm going to do by this date. So you need a start date and you need an end date. Let's focus on a date. Let's make sure that everybody has the completion date. I know Lisa has LinkedIn by the end of this week. Put the, you don't have to put a date on there. But is it realistic for everybody to say no later than Friday the 19th for everybody? Yes. Okay. Miguel, sound realistic for you? For one of the connections, yeah. Okay, okay good. David, way to commit to by Wednesday. Todd, tomorrow. Tuesday, you know tomorrow is Tuesday, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Four of them are happening tomorrow and the last coffee is happening Wednesday. So awesome. Okay. All right. So everybody can commit to their three to five things or three to seven, I think, for some people. By Friday, no later than Friday. Is that a guess? Okay. All right. Um so I think that we're done with this. How do How's everybody feeling about this? Does this seem doable? Yes. A little nauseated? Okay. All right. Kevin, Sunday, huh? All right. One a day trip. until Sunday. Okay. There you go. Good job. Okay. So I want you to think about, I'd love you to think about all of these, but I don't want to jump in on Todd and Kevin's wrap-up time. So... Tell me one thing that you learned or was beneficial to you today. And I want, I would love everybody to say something, except Todd and Kevin. We can come back to them. I'm going to make sure everybody else says something. Miguel. Uh, I think I shared earlier, but just, just the fact of uh, having the intention to network for me is powerful. Uh, I wasn't sure what I was getting into today joining the session, but uh, uh, I think uh, I've been blessed uh, go to great schools and got great network of people, but I never set an intention to really reach out to those people, right? Uh, to connect, to stay in touch. Uh, network sometimes, I think I see people as plants, you know? Uh, I, I, I think I know this by all my readings, all my research, right? You don't wanna approach people the moment that you need them. You wanna, you wanna water the seeds over time. So I think just the fact of you asking this question, who can I connect with? Uh, right, who can I network this month? I think it will be tremendously beneficial to me because I'll create a habit out of it, right? And then have it, right? New, new habits, new reality. And then uh, right. that's the biggest takeaway for me is how can I start watering plants so when I need them? Because I don't have an immediate necessarily need right now of the people that I chose, but uh, it's evolving. I feel like God's putting pieces in place. So this could really help build even more momentum. So when I do need it, it won't be like, oh, I haven't talked to you in two years. Uh, what about this? But it's more like I've been warming up connections. Make sense? Awesome. Yeah, I love that. Who wants to go next?
Come on, Lisa. I was about to say, Lisa, that's good. Getting on LinkedIn, that's good. What have you learned about yourself? That's new to me because I've never used it before. I've, you know, seen a lot of people send me, you know, suggestions and stuff, but I've um, had a steady job for a long, long time in the state and um, didn't have any need for it. But now that I have a, a need for it, I can see how to utilize it. And this reminder and um, notifying me, you know, that it's a good tool to use is um, a good eye opener for me tonight. Thank yeah. you. Make sure you connect with me because I've got some tips and ways to write bio lines and things you need to include in your resume, things out there. So thank you. you'll okay. come find me. I'll give you some more stuff to do. Oh, thank you. Okay. Darren, anything? I think uh, writing down the, the having to stop and identify the specific people to reach out to can be quite useful. Um, by uh, some amount of coincidence, I was actually, I had actually picked out, uh, thought about, thought of three people earlier today to reach out to in various ways. So I don't know if that was serendipity or uh, <laughs> what was going on. Not uh, coincidental. But I didn't know we were going to do it here. So I was kind of uh, cheating a little bit in that I had already had three people in mind and um, I know how I can connect with them. Good. David Salon. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I just the affirmation that networking is the way to go. I mean, I, I think I know all this stuff. I just need to see some proof on it. What would be helpful to you, David? Because you do already know a lot. You've got a lot of history and stuff. Yeah. Is there something that would help you take well, it to the next level? I mean, candidly, we, and we talked a little bit about this Friday. Uh, you know, I don't want to dump on our fellow Ace brothers, since you're the only one here. But you know, we, we talk a lot about helping folks, and I see very little coming out of that outside of your group, right? About you know, making connections and things. You think of all the people in that room, and you know, I think the intentions are good. I just don't see a lot of uh, a lot of follow up and results. With the, with the ACE group itself? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'd love to, you know, I, I, I kind of probably felt that way maybe at the beginning of this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just some things started happening that I would love to chat with you one-on-one -on -one about that I think could, that might be valuable for you. So if you want to get together and chat one-on-one -on -one about that, I'd love to support you in that, number one, and, and yeah. make, a, make a difference between you and me at least. But um, I, I, I just learned some things sort of right at the beginning of this that kind of, because I, I would have probably said exactly the same thing at the beginning of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah it'd be great. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Kevin, Todd, anything beneficial, what you've learned about yourself or how you're going to use that going forward? Because I think Dawn, she had to drop, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. I think it's a, uh, it's Kevin here. I was just going to say, mm -hmm. I think that um, when we're employed and we have a job, sometimes it, it's easier to network it's easier to make connections because we are confident in ourselves. We're sure about ourselves. We have an identity, um, whatever that is. And when we get unemployed, it's easy to fall away from that. Um, so I think um, the things that, you know, whether you're employed or not is, you know, the, the specifics when we talked about what Todd did, you know, and the WAM group, I think that's really important. Um, it's a, it's a gentle reminder. Um, and, uh, you know, and again, just, just remembering, um, you got to get out and do it. You know, it's, it's really hard, but that you have to get out and do it. Um, I found myself, I'd consider myself, uh, and my wife would call me a, you know, a networker. That's what I've been known for. And the last two, two and a half years, I've been in a bubble. And I'm a recruiter um, and I help people when they reach out to me, but I haven't been doing it myself. 
So I think it's very easy to fall off of it, um, but you have to be intentional and remember that it is work. So those are the things that jumped out at me, just to, you know, a refresher, a reminder, somebody that's been doing recruiting for 15 plus years, you know, con connecting and networking is your game. So, but it's very easy. And then the other thing is get back to the basics. Just remember, having conversations, asking questions, um, and then and knowing what your story is, is, is really most important. Got it. Good stuff. Super quick, Todd. Chris, something that I want to add, I, I think, uh, look at some more information. It sounds like you're, you're a coach, right? And all that. So you probably do this for a living. Uh, but the mindset piece, I don't think we, maybe I missed it because I joined late, but, uh, I think something that people miss, we miss, is that uh, to get any job, to get any client, you first have to believe and see yourself. Even the Bible says, right? Believe as you have received that it will be yours. I think we've heard it over and over again that that's a 90, 80, 90%. But people don't, don't have the practices, don't have the habits to really rewire their brain. So like mm -hmm. something that I want to like, encourage is that all the tools and mechanics are like the 10%, the 20%. If you don't believe you can get the client, if you don't believe you can get the job, you won't get the job, right? Because at the end of the day, it, it's believing that you can that will enable the rest to come. Does that make sense? Maybe I missed that, but Absolutely. I, I, I know for a fact that you know that, right? Just wanted to highlight that as critical. We, we hit on it just a little bit. Um, there's a couple of downloads that I'm going to um, send to Todd that he's going to post out there. And that it's kind of the five things that I know I focus on with my people and cool. that mindset is in there. Yeah, it's important. It's important. You know, can I, speaking on the mindset, you know, one of the things that, uh, I, I'll just tell you a little story. It kind of isn't related to this in a way, but I think about it exactly in this. I have a friend of mine who tells me that, you know, um, <clears throat> had this perspective with me that sometimes we think that God is kind of withholding from us, you know, like, we're like, hey, could you just, you know, make it clear? Could you just make all the lights green? Could you just tell me what you want from me? You know, we're, we, we, we almost feel like he's kind of making it difficult that he's kind of, uh, you know, keeping us from being able to see what we need or get what we need. And we're like, where are you? What's going on? And he said, you know, imagine, though, that he's like a father. And what what he's done is he's prepared, you know, an Easter egg hunt for you out in the, in the yard. And he just wants you to go and be a part of having this great fun of going and finding these Easter eggs. Right. And when you, when you realize it's kind of a little more like that, it gets from the, I've got to, to the, I get to, right. Like I get to go and go on this Easter egg hunt. I get to go meet new people. I get to go and learn some exciting new things. And, I get to see what God's going to do with this mysterious, you know, transition moment that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that kind of can, can flip our mindset a little bit. Right. And, uh, so I, ever since he told me that it just gives me such a huge perspective because I'm like, Oh, what kind of Easter egg are we on today? Right. Cause that, <laughs> that makes a big difference when you look at it that way. So I don't know if that helps, but that's one of my favorite, um, you know, mind hacks, if you would. <laughs> I like that. It's a good one. Um, I know the rest of the stuff that I have because I'm a recovering consultant is just a massive appendix section that I'm not going to share. Um, I'll share some links um, that I know that you guys will find beneficial. There's one just um, the five things that I know that my clients need and that we reinforce every time. There's another link to a book. Um, it's a free ebook and it's specifically for like navigating a job search in tough times. So I'm going to send both of those links to Todd and you guys can download them. If you connect with me on LinkedIn, I can send them to you there as well. Yep. I think that's all I had. Except my massive appendix section. Thank you, Christy. Thank you Thank for your help. so much. It was so nice Thank to you. meet all of you. I appreciate it. That was awesome, Christy. Thank you so much for doing some group coaching with us. Not just a presentation, but some group coaching. <laughs> Not as much as I'd like, but anyway, it's some. That's great. Yeah, just thank you so much, Christy, for your time and information. It was ex excellent. Very excellent. much appreciated. So, uh, so, yeah, thank you again. And we will 
Christy will get me that and I'll, um, I'll put that up. We'll have this, you know, this video up too. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been putting all the videos up. Um, so we'll have this one up probably tomorrow and we'll send that link out to you guys too. And, um, so, uh, but, but you, you would be good to reach out and connect with her because Christy is a great resource. She's helped me quite a bit actually and connected me with a bunch of really awesome people. So, um, uh, you know, we, that's, that's a good way to go is to meet people here and connect. And even, even though these people may not necessarily be in the job hunt, they might be really good connections or give some good thoughts to you. And, um, so, you know, every time you, you go, try to, try to put things in, you know, just try to put your, your LinkedIn note, like Darren just did, you know, and let people know, you know, how to connect with you. Um, and that way you start building a network of support. Okay. Um, one last thing that I would love to share or love for you guys to think about is how you want to be held accountable for what you said you were going to do. <laughs> Todd's laughing. He's like, of course she has to end with the coaching thing. <laughs> That's all good. I love how it. do you want to be, how do you want to be held accountable? Who's, who's somebody here that you could pair up with and tell them, yeah, I did this. I'll do it with Todd. We got a little meeting tomorrow. So <laughs> I kind of cheated too, Darren, because Miguel was already on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I think yeah, but you knew what was happening. I didn't. So. No, I didn't. I didn't. I just, <laughs> I just went, well, who have I already scheduled and or I'm in the middle of scheduling. So yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Y'all have somebody, everybody have somebody. If it's not someone from here, just, I would recommend that. That's actually kind of the spirit of the wham in the book. And by the way, accountability is something you really are to yourself. You're accountable to yourself, but if you're accountable to yourself, you're not afraid to kind of tell people that what you're doing, right. And, and share that with them. Right. So like when we do accountability in the wham session, we're not holding each other accountable. We're accountable to ourselves because we show up every week and we, we do our report and we say it, but, uh, it's nice to have shared camaraderie and support each other. Right. And so, you know, that kind of old accountability group thing is kind of a, um, it's okay, but it's kind of weak because really what you're developing is integrity to yourself. Right. And, yep. um, so it's a really great book, by the way, I really recommend reading it. Um, I wrote it down. Yeah. Can't wait. Y'all can tell me when you find me on LinkedIn, you can tell me too. I'm doing my stuff. I'm putting it on my calendar tomorrow. I've got 30 minutes to do my stuff. And you know where I'm at too. So if you don't have anyone yes. else, reach out. Or even next week. Guys, next, let me. Next week's meeting. Yeah, yeah that's true right. too. Yeah. You can start mm -hmm. the meeting like that. Do everybody do their stuff. Let me, mm -hmm. uh, let me close this all in prayer. And thank you guys again for joining. Christy, again, thank you so much. This was really great. And uh, we're excited to, you got to Chris and our first mm -hmm. guest speaker. Uh, we're going to, again, we're going to have Dar Darren next week and I know he's going to share some awesome stuff with us too. So, uh, come on back. And well, uh, talking up too much. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if you, and if you, yeah, you better be on the spot now, buddy. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but also, uh, do us a favor and you know, it's summertime, people are busy and everything, but there's a lot of people out of work, right? So here's another thing make a list, think of two or three people that you know need this and reach out and tell them about it because we'd love to have more people here. And Yeah, and um, if you, you can post it on your LinkedIn feed as well if you just yes. want to put it out to everybody in your connections. Yes, please, on your LinkedIn, on your Facebook feed. I put out a, a thing usually by the end of the week, every week uh, with you know some info and so you can just draft off of mine and share it in your feed. It's not even a hard thing to do. So we, we appreciate all those kinds of efforts. That's super helpful. And um, again, let me pray for us. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for um, being with us this evening because your word says where two or three are, are gathered in your name, uh, there you are um, amongst us. And, uh, and we really love what Christy shared. And Father, what we really long for is what you're speaking uh, through what she's sharing into our hearts. So just really quicken that to people that we just really pray that everybody hears what you want them to hear and that they can be emboldened to take the kind of action that they need in their life to take them to the next level and to um, to not be overwhelmed by this transition time period 
but instead to uh, take it with excitement uh, at, at getting to see what you're going to do, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, hey guys. Thank yeah. you. All. Have a great evening. Have a good night. All right. Good night, guys. Bye, everybody. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> bye bye. This is Todd Boyham, and we hope you enjoyed this presentation of Fellowship Career Network. We meet every Monday evening from 6.30 to 8 p.m., and we hope you'll join us soon. To register and receive the Zoom link in your email, simply go to fellowshipcareernetwork.com today.